Writing a book uh, is like an adventure. It's a combination of fear and uh, exhilaration. Fear that you may be rejected and exhilarating in that you finally accomplished and conquered it. Um, the idea of a book starts off like a toy that grows into an amusement and then becomes a mistress and later a master and finally a tyrant with an obsession to try to get to the end of it. This book is a series of nostalgic uh, recollections that cover my life from the years at the Kent School, at Yale, the Marine Corps, the Kentucky State Police, Keeneland, the Breeders' Cup, and the World's Racing Championships. Its primary focus is on the time, the places, and the people who had a great influence on my life. The book's background covers a period of one of the most interesting and fascinating chapters in our nation's history, ranging from the Great Depression through World War II into the Civil Rights and the Labor Turmoil era, the advent of the jet space and electronic ages, and the explosion and the contraction of the thoroughbred racing and breeding industry. To those of us who lived during this period, it was a life-changing experience. For me, it was a privilege and I was fortunate to have been a participant. I cannot tell you the exact moment when it occurred when we decided to write a book. I know the Thoroughbred Times, which is a publication for whom I'm the contributing editor, had asked me to sort of pre-write an obituary on Ted so when the day came he died they could put it in the magazine immediately. And Ted, independently of that, had been talking to some friends of his who said, you know, you've got to do get somebody to do your obituary beforehand so you can see it and see what they write about you. And somewhere along the line, it evolved into the idea of doing a book. I can tell you that he was the one who approached me with the idea. And we actually started work on it in July of 2005. And I had told him, well, what I'm going to do is come in and ask you about your life and ask you just to go on a roll talking about things that are of interest to you. I said we're going to have to get at least 130,000 words in transcript. And I think compared, uh, if, you, if you take and combine the interviews I did with Ted and the interviews I did with about 40 other people, I think it came down to 220,000 words I eventually transcribed and we had started work on the book in July of 2005. We first approached the University Press of Kentucky with a proposal in April of 2006 and I believe the proposal was accepted the following month in May. I was a young boy, um, reading has been a passion of mine, and I particularly enjoy reading about history. And I ended up getting two college degrees in history, and it's the history and heritage of subjects such as horse racing 
that appeals to me the most. And there's a lot of history and heritage woven into the Ted Bassett autobiography because Ted was not only an eyewitness, but he's been a participant in so much history during the past 75 years. I mean, um, he, he remembers quite well the Great Depression. That's when he went to preparatory school. He remembers the advent of World War II and what the reaction was on the Yale University campus. He joined the Marines. He was twice wounded during the Okinawa campaign. He participated in the United States occupation of Japan after the surrender. Um, Ted, was, uh, Ted was director of the state police during a very turbulent era involving civil rights and labor strife during the 1960s. And of course, Ted has been a key participant in the past 40 years, the history and heritage that's evolved during the past 40 years about thoroughbred racing. Not only at Keeneland, but involving the Breeders' Cup. It was Ted's tenure as Breeders' Cup president that experienced its greatest growth. Son, what is your name? Robert Ussery. And uh, what is your career? What have you done besides chasing women? Well, I used to be a jock. Oh, you so did? A jockey at one time. Did you ever Once ride, upon a time. Did you ever ride in, a, in an outstanding race somewhere? Oh, yes, yeah. Like, I won like the, what? I won the Kentucky Derby twice. Is that okay? Well, on what horse? Uh, Proud Same Clarion thing. in 67 and Dancer's Image in 68. You, you raced on Proud Clarion? Yeah. Do you remember they tried to stop that derby? I, say, I certainly do. Do you remember me standing in do. the infield and saying, with, "Thou shalt not right, with pass. the gun. I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, that was true. They almost they wanted to b right. boycott the derby that year. All right, now you're on proud Clarion <laughs> at 67. Now you mentioned another horse, the dancer's image. Dancer's image, but that was a tremendous brouhaha. Yeah. Over well, what? Yeah. Well, well, it was over some butte that they, they give the horse, and uh, they gave but it to him. you were in on that with Doug N Davis of giving that no. horse an over... No, uh, that had no reflection on me because they didn't check me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and if they had, what, if they had, what would have happened? <laughs> well, I'm mean, going to tell you, they didn't, check, they didn't check me, so... And they made the race official. But that was one of the great scandals. Of yes, the it was. And you were was, part of it. It was five years later that they finally resolved it. Weren't you ashamed of yourself with the part you played in that? I was ashamed of myself that I didn't get an attorney to, to protect myself because I should have got credit for that win. Well, that's right. Because they, the, they made the race official. You know. well, but well, I, that's right, because you were disqualified. The horse was disqualified. What <laughs> you? Well, they didn't, I told you, they didn't check me. <laughs> Alan, look at Alan in here. Yeah, Alan. Alan, <laughs> Alan this, this, ladies and gentlemen, this is the great Alan Weiss, formerly of uh, one of the great mortgage brokerage houses in Wall Street. <laughs> <laughs> he is taking uh, credit for winning the Derby on Dancer's Image. He, right. he is. And Dancer's Image was disqualified. Why, well, yeah. Please. So, Rough ride. Yeah, you Rough know. Rough ride. But, but now, uh, Peter Fuller sued for years about that. It was five, in litigation five years. And what happened? Well, they uh, they took his number down, and they took the purse away. Well, speak under the camera. Oh, they, they, well, I, I mean, he's talking to me. I mean, I didn't know it. I didn't know they had the camera on me. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, shut I thought they would shut up. <laughs> don't no, they, 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 in litigation don't. five years. Uh, they disqualified okay. my horse to give the race to forward pass. Don't write a book, just <laughs> <laughs> Like this, to, one of the greatest experience somebody can have would be to grow up on the backside of Keeneland and have Keeneland for your playground. And and this gentleman that I'm talking to, essentially Keeneland is his, is his baby, now it's his grandson, and he's done everything in the world to show the world what class racing is. And uh, it's always just so great to come here and run because it's the hardest racing in the world. And right now I call it training on the palace grounds. Oh my goodness, the script. Uh, you must have gone to Harvard with this eloquence <laughs> that you have.